Hi and welcome to today's Daily Bible Reading. We're in Revelation chapter 8 and before we get into it I wanted to say thank you to those people who have recently subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much, welcome. And to those who have given thumbs up and encouraging comments down the bottom and even those who've bought the ebooks available that expand on some of these topics, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate it. And now we're in Revelation chapter 8. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints, rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Well, we have a couple of things going on here. Firstly, we have allusions to the tabernacle, the temple practices, we've got what appears to be priestly uh, services happening with incense being offered, which is what the priests had to do, which is mixed with the prayers of the saints. So something's happening, something is about to come to an end. Seven means complete, this is the seventh seal, and we are told that there's uh, fire on the altar and peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Uh, what we know historically described by Josephus is that these are the events that coincided with the destruction of the temple. And so I'm suggesting to you that what we're, what we're reading here is the close of the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant was made obsolete at the cross but it didn't end at the cross until the elements of the Old Covenant, the temple, priesthood, sacrifices, were actually done away with. And we know that because in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, it actually says the Old Covenant has been made obsolete and Hebrews written around about 63 AD or so, it goes on in that verse and it says the Old Covenant's been made obsolete and is about to be done away with. Pretty strange, isn't it? If we think that the Old Covenant was done away with. It also explains, and this has caused some confusion for people, why people like the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul would still participate in Jewish practices. He, he, at, he partakes in temple rituals and things, and, and at one point he's, he's taken captive when he's in the temple precinct. So it explains, if we, have a, if we have an overlap of covenants happening, this makes perfect sense. So let's read on. We're now looking at verse 6. Now the seven angels who had, who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood. And these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. So I'm suggesting that that correlates to the, the Roman catapult attack on Jerusalem. And verse 8, The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Verse 10, the third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. Verse 12. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. 
Then I looked and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead. Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth at the blasts of other trumpets that the three angels are about to blow. So I'm suggesting that what we're, what we're seeing here is a description, a prophetic description of the destruction of Jerusalem. And the expression sun, moon and stars refers to the nation of Israel. Joseph dreamed the dream. He saw the sun, moon and stars bowing down to him. And it goes on and says, this was Israel and the, the brothers, his brothers, the, the, the originators of the tribes of Israel. Joel the prophet describing rebellious Israel says the sun has been darkened, the moon has turned to blood and the stars have fallen from the sky. People have read this in a wooden literal sense without appreciating biblical language and biblical genre, without realising the, the artistic description of Israel, sun, moon and stars, and a third of them being destroyed. In other words, just very simply, a lot of Hebrews, a lot of Israelites were about to die. And Josephus tells us there were. There were a lot. So what we have is a prophetic foretelling of the destruction of Jerusalem. And this, this will go on. The description will go on. Let's leave it there. And I think you're beginning to get a gist that the book of Revelation, when it said, Now, near, at hand, this hour, that's exactly what it meant. Written in 65 AD, these events began in 66 AD and culminated in 70 AD. Literally months away from the writing of this book, these events began. So let's pray. Father, we have great reason to have great confidence in your word from what we read here. We read of John foretelling of what would happen to Jerusalem and we can look back in history and we can see it was fulfilled exactly which also fulfilled the words of Christ in Matthew 24. Father, we therefore have great confidence that your word indeed is the inerrant, infallible, ins divinely inspired word of God. And if this is true, so is the rest. So Father, help us to take great confidence in your word. May it nourish our souls. May it cause us to worship you. May it cause us to realize that you are the God of the new covenant who is calling all people to repent and to come to a saving knowledge in your Son. Help us, Lord, to be that light, to be able to share the love of Christ with as many people as we can, I pray in Jesus' name. Well, I'd appreciate it if you did give this a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that as well. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next Daily Bible Read. Thank you.